can't begin to tell you how excited I am to do this practical lesson with you at last. Our very first of this course and a chance for you to truly feel the joy of producing something beautiful and functional with your hands. Although creating rolled beeswax candles is a simple process, it's an art that will produce a truly beautiful result. Hopefully, it will also inspire you to continue moving forward on your journey with candles. There's nothing like a hands-on approach when it comes to a subject like the one we're exploring together, and nothing quite so satisfying as seeing all your technical knowledge transform into a physical product to bring together your left and right brain functions. Let's get right into things. Welcome to your professional diploma in candle making and lessons three of the first module of this course, rolling into beeswax. During this lesson, we are going to be discussing the following objectives. Explaining how to handle sheet beeswax, creating a workspace for this project, and constructing simple rolled beeswax candles. We're going to begin our lesson by discussing how to handle our beeswax sheets. Let's start by taking a look at what they actually are. As spoken about in our previous lesson, beeswax sheets are thin, pliable, pre-molded sheets of wax that are very aesthetically pleasing. Today we will be conducting our first practical lesson and learning how to craft beautiful candles from this product. However, this is not the primary use of a wax sheet, which is also known as a foundation sheet. Their actual function is to be used in beehives to attract scout honeybees. These scout bees will then hopefully see the space as a new hive and encourage them to start a colony and begin production there. Before we begin our practical lesson, I feel it's very important to discuss and thereby pay tribute to what actually goes into the creation of the product we will be handling today. This is both important in terms of remaining mindful of the environmental contribution, as well as to instill a sense of gratitude within us for the creature responsible for offering us such a unique medium to work with. Here's a fun fact for you. Did you know that creating one gram of beeswax and eight grams of honey require the same energetic output from a single bee? This, of course, leads us to understand why beeswax is a rare and cherished commodity. Western honeybees secrete an oily organic compound from four sets of specialized glands on their bodies. This secretion is actually presented as a wax scale. The worker bees then use their forelegs to move the scale from their abdomen to their mouths. They chew it to combine it with their saliva and then transfer it to the honeycomb they're creating. The spectacular hexagonal cell shape of the honeycomb has been a source of fascination for scientists and humans in general for many, many years. The easily identifiable building structure of these cells is very important in maintaining the temperature of the hive and is a magnificent representation of just how organized the honeybee is in terms of their provision for shelter, food, storage, raising their young, and maintaining the intricate chemical composition of the colony. The uses for beeswax, however, extend far past the purposes it serves the humble creature itself. Humans have used it for embalming, ceiling paintings, candle making, a medicinal ingredient, and glue. Many of these uses were more prevalent in earlier cultures, though, and have been replaced by these days. Beeswax is in fact used most frequently by the beekeeping industry for keeping comb foundation sheets like the ones we'll be working with today and therefore remains true to being used as it was intended in nature. More recently, though, humans have begun duplicating the hexagonal structure of the wax sheet created by bees and making their own. This has been done partly as a means to add an existing foundation sheet to a beehive to attract the bees to create a colony there, but also in part to use these sheets, which can be quite hard to come by, in candle making. One way this is done is by using a flat silicone foundation press mold. You would pour melted wax on the silicone sheet, which incorporates the hexagonal pattern, and then put the top silicone sheet over it so that the pattern is formed on both sides of the sheet. Once cooled, you can simply lift the sheet off the silicone and you'll have a perfect beeswax sheet. Now we're going to speak about how you might store your beeswax sheets correctly. Beeswax occurs naturally and is created in a honeycomb for the storage of honey by bees. It has a wide variety of uses and a fantastic longevity if it is stored correctly. Fortunately, its storage necessities aren't complicated. So long as it remains at room temperature, Preferably in a dark spot 
and is kept wrapped to prevent dust from sticking to it. It's always a good idea to wrap it in some form of paper to keep dust from adhering to it. For instance, brown craft paper. With wax sheets like the ones we'll be working with today, I'd suggest placing a piece of paper, either craft or kitchen wax paper, between each sheet of wax to prevent them from sticking to one another and potentially warping the hexagonal shape of their pattern. If you are storing the wax in a metal container of sorts, just ensure that it's a stainless steel vessel. Other metals like lead, iron or copper can actually darken the color of the wax. It should also be noted that with this wax form being rather soft, leaving it in the sun will certainly also melt or misshape it. So keeping it safely away from sunlight is a good idea. Fortunately, it would be very unusual for beeswax to go off or become unusable from age. It's been said that beeswax found in the ancient Egyptian tombs of the pharaohs was in fact still usable upon discovery. I'd say this indicates a good, extensive shelf life, wouldn't you? Following on the storage instructions, let's talk about how to handle beeswax sheets to prevent them from misshaping. When working with beeswax sheets, I found that it's better to do this in a room with a moderate temperature. Beeswax is heat sensitive and because of this, pliable and easy to use, but also easy to break or squash. I would suggest working at a surface away from a window where the light shines onto the workspace and breezes could bring in dust. During winter, when it's cold, heating the room moderately is a good idea. This will allow the wax to remain pliable, but not cold and hard, which might cause it to snap instead of being able to be rolled. In the summer months, when it's hotter, I'd suggest making these candles in the early morning, before the day heats up too much. Alternatively, Working in a moderately air-conditioned space will work well too. This allows the wax to remain pliable without becoming so soft that it gets too sticky to roll or work with. If it gets too tacky, it could well just pull apart and leave large amounts of residue on your hands and surfaces. Now let's talk about how to set up a workspace for your beeswax candles. Before beginning to make our candles, we should create a workspace where this process will take place. It's important to know what you need to have on hand and to be correctly settled when you begin creating so that you don't have to interrupt the process to go looking for items that you might need. With this being a creative and actually very soothing process, I always like to make sure I'm in a relaxed space, perhaps with some nice music on. This can really be a time where you connect back to yourself and the joy of making something with your hands instead of staring at a screen of some sort. I encourage you to make the most of this time you spend with your craft. Working seated at a table is great for this project. To protect your surface from scratches and stickiness, although beeswax is famously good for treating wood, I'd advise using a transparent PVC cutting mat on your table. It's preferable that you sit somewhere that doesn't receive direct light from a window, but where there is good lighting for you to work with. Let's list the equipment you're going to need for this project. The items you will need are as follows. Pure beeswax sheets, square braid wick, a metal ruler, sharp scissors, preferably ones that you will use for the sole purpose, and a hair dryer for in case. Alternatively, you can also make use of a blade cutter or a rotary cutter. Be sure to wash your hands thoroughly before handling the wax so as not to transfer any unintentional dirt or fibers onto the sheet. In addition to that, we need to see what you should have on hand in case of an accident. Fortunately, in this candle making process, we don't have many safety concerns to take into account. Since we won't be melting any solid wax down or working with burners of any kind, this is a safe enough project to do even with children, should you wish. The only accident, in inverted commas, that I do see the potential for is the beeswax sheets not necessarily being pliable. For this, I would keep a hairdryer handy. One quick blast along the area you're working on should make the sheet a little more supple if you need it. On to the cleanup. This really isn't a messy candle to make, but the one possibility you may encounter is a buildup of wax on your surface or scissors and ruler. If this happens, there are two different ways to clean it so your gear doesn't get tacky. My go-to is to use some raw, melted coconut oil on a piece of cotton wool and to gently wipe down the areas that have become tacky. This should remove the sticky buildup. Once you've done this, using soap and water to clean any remaining traces of wax should be sufficient to keep your gear and workspace residue free. Did you know, B 
Beeswax candles act as a natural air purifying system. When burning, beeswax performs a function that is identical to that of lightning. The burning of beeswax releases negative ions into the air, and these negative ions attach to positive ions such as mold, dust, and other things we'd prefer not to have float around our homes. When these two ions combine, they neutralize one another, thus cleaning the air. We've already covered so much information today. Let's take a moment to rest our minds before we continue with this exciting lesson. And while we do that, I'll introduce lesson four to you. In our next session together, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at different types of wax and how and where it might be appropriate to use the different varieties. We'll explore each wax type in detail and build on your knowledge of this very important raw material relating to your craft. For now though, let's go back to lesson three. With that in mind, we are going to begin our practical lesson on constructing simple rolled beeswax candles. We'll start with the dinner candle. For the purposes of this lesson, I'm going to give you very specific instructions on the measurements and construction of your first beeswax candles. These, however, are parameters that you can question and change up as you like when you're confident enough to experiment on your own. Firstly, we're aiming at making a 19 cm tall taper candle with a 2 cm base diameter. Depending on the candle holders you intend to place this candle in though, you can adjust the width of the wax sheet to be longer or shorter to create a thicker or thinner candle diameter. The wax sheets I've bought measure 20 cm by 41 cm, but I'd like them to measure 19 cm by 21 cm. What I'm going to do to start is to lay my wax sheet flat on the cutting mat, being careful to keep the sheet above or beside my hands so that I don't rest them on it and melt the wax. Then, measure out 21 cm on the longest side and mark that point with an incision in the wax. From that point up, I will mark out the desired length, namely 19 cm, on the shorter side. Once I've double-checked these markings to ensure they're at right angles, I will use my ruler and scissors or rotary cutter to cut the sheet to the desired size. Next, we need to measure the length of our wick. The easiest way to do this would be to line it up with the edge of the candle and then leave an extra half inch or two inches depending on the type of finish you would like to create with your wick. I will demonstrate both options at the appropriate point in this lesson. The following step is to place the length of the wick along the very edge of your wax sheet. Once it's neatly lined up with the edge, you'll notice you can press. I know you told your friend you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way. And guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away. But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to gray. As you fade away, yeah. Yeah, I'm about to fade away Cause every time I wake up I feel like it's Monday Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain All of a sudden I don't look at anything the same way Gotta build up of my thoughts sitting in an ashtray I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay Just let me be me and I'll stay out of your way I can see the way you look at me, I'm such a disgrace I never really asked to be brought into this place You wanna love me? Well then baby, have a taste All the highs and the lows no, you'll never be the same I don't really wanna hurt you, but I can't control the pain If you're sticking by my side, maybe we could be okay Okay, okay, maybe you could be the change I need today, I promise that I've never felt this way I really hope that you will choose to stay through all the pain I know you told your friend you're not okay And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way Try to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to grey As you fade away
just because it's a lovely presentation, is to tie the longer length wick into a simple loop knot. It adds to the artisanal feel and gives a softer look to the overall presentation, especially if you intend to sell or giving the candle as a gift. You can then just instruct the receiver to trim their wick correctly when they are ready to burn their beautiful candle. Something good to know about taper candles is that while they aren't governed by any body that standardizes them specifically, they do conform to two standard sizing structures. Tapers, which can also be called dinner candles, can be anywhere between 6 and 18 inches in height, and depending on this can have a base of 1.4 cm up to a base of 2.25 cm. Ordinarily, smaller tapers, but if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead, maybe you'll get sick of being the monster. Silhouettes of you are like a taunt Never really noticed what you want With you I don't ever feel calm I can feel the sweat inside my palms Play with me like cats and a string You don't understand the pain it brings You don't ever wanna give me wings You don't ever wanna set me free You know I'm addicted to you And it's twisted you've been gifted with the evil voodoo Got me coming back for more, even when I've been screwed Dolls full of pins, pierce my heart straight through I got issues in my head, I like you in my bed But you keep me on red, oh Everything is like a test, I better not text or I'll come off desperate But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead Maybe you'll get sick of being the monster Out of my head, under my bed, think you're something out of my Play dead, will you regret everything that you did, that you said I don't think you understand what you're doing And my heart's black and blue from the bruising I feel like when I'm with you I'm losing I feel like you think that this amusing Sitting there gaslighting and confusing Was it me, is it me, am I deluded? I'm the one who's always sorry, the conclusion Even though I offer all of the solutions I wish you loved me like I love you, it's stupid When I'm alone with you, I never feel lucid I wish I wasn't struck by Cupid I wish when I first saw you, I knew this When I'm with you, I feel so useless I feel diluted, my heart's been wounded Silhouettes of you are like a dawn Never really noticed what you want with you I don't ever feel calm I can feel the sweat inside my palms Play with me like cats and a string You don't understand the pain it brings You don't ever want to give me wings You don't ever want to set me free But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead Maybe you'll get sick of being the monster Out of my head, under my bed Think you're something Bye. 
Our cutting measurements are going to be slightly different this time to achieve the alternative dimensions of this candle. Ideally, votives are a little thicker in diameter and significantly shorter in length. This time, I'm going to start in the same manner by laying my wax sheet flat on the cutting mat, once again being careful to keep the sheet above or beside my hand so that my body heat doesn't transfer significantly to the wax and melt it. Then measure out 40 centimeters on the longest side and mark that point with an incision in the wax. From that point up, I will mark out the desired length, namely 6 centimeters on the shorter side. Once I've double checked these markings to ensure they're at right angles, I will use my metal ruler and rotary cutter to cut the sheet to the desired size. While we're about it this time, since we already have our 6 centimeters marked out, I'm going to cut several rows out of this wax sheet. trim from your wax sheet, you can better understand how this simple rolling technique actually opens you up to a whole variety of candle sizes that can be made in the same manner. You could investigate making thick based pillar candles as well as even making small skinny candles to be used on a birthday cake. The options are only limited to your imagination. Here's a tip for beeswax candles. Ideally, to create an optimum burn in beeswax sheet candles, they should cure for a year. Of course, this is not ideal, especially having just made your first one. 
The reason for the long curing process is to make sure that the candle burns downward more evenly and with minimal guttering. A sneaky trick you can try instead of the year-long cure, though, is to place it in your freezer for three hours. This will make a world of difference to their burning properties and allow you to use your candles almost instantly.